गुड इवनिंग सर सर आवर टॉपिक फॉर दिस प्रेजेंटेशन इज ट्यूरिंग डिसाइडेबल लैंग्वेजेस एंड देयर क्लोजर प्रॉपर्टीज सो अलाउ मी टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू आवर टीम आवर टीम कंप्राइजेस ऑफ माई सेल्फ देवलीना हजरा अनन्ना रॉय अनुष्का दे एंड मंजिष्ठा धौर द कॉन्टेंट्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन आर एंड इंट्रोडक्शन टू ट्यूरिंग डिसाइडेबल लैंग्वेजेस देयर क्लोजर प्रॉपर्टीज some numerical examples and some multiple choice questions and finally conclusion and bibliography with that let's get started so a turing machine will accept any recursively enumerable language recursive means that it receive uh, repeats the same set of rules and enumerable means any uh, given set of elements the turing machine will uh, also accept any computable functions like addition subtraction multiplication division power function etc now we can have three kinds of situations either the turing machine can accept an input or uh, reject an input and halt or keep uh, computing a uh, language can be called turing decidable if and only if when the uh, when encountering an input in that language the machine halts or terminates and uh, accepts the input and when encountering an input not in that language also it halts and rejects it uh, moving on to the closure properties so turing decidable languages are closed under all five uh, operations that is union concatenation clean start intersection and complementation so first union operation if both l1 and l2 are turing acceptable then l1 union l2 is also uh, uh, decidable next concatenation if l1 and l2 are decidable then l1 and l2 is also decidable clean star if l1 is uh, decidable then l1 star is also decidable uh, next slide uh, intersection if l1 and l2 are decidable then l1 intersection l2 is also decidable and com uh, finally complementation if l1 is decidable then l1 complement is also decidable moving on to the next slide here is the first example so given two regular languages l1 and l2 is the problem of finding uh, whether a string w that exists in both l1 and l2 decidable problem or not so we uh, are going to move on with the solution now since l1 and l2 are both regular they are accepted by uh, dfas so to solve this problem we make two turing machines tm1 and tm2 which will simulate the dfas of l1 and l2 since the dfa always halts we can say that the tm1 and tm2 will also halt separately now to include the both part we are going to connect the outputs of tm1 and tm2 with a modified and gate now we observe that this system halts on every input and hence we can say that it is a decidable problem now the next part will be uh, explained by my friend arunna thank you devina uh, good evening sir so uh, this is the problem d equals to b n a n b n uh, n greater than equal to 0 so uh, the solution of this problem is b is turing decidable language below is a description of turing machine that decides uh, b uh, at first we have to scan the input from left to right and make sure that it is a member of b star a star b star if it is it is uh, not then uh, it uh, rejected and uh, then we uh, return tf to left at end Uh, and then, uh, then we have to repeat the following until there are no more BSS left uh, of the tape. Uh, then we replace, we can replace the leftmost B with X, and we have to scan right until an uh, until an A occurs. If there are no A, uh, then it is rejected. Then we have to replace the leftmost A with X, and uh, we have to scan right until a B occurs. if there are no b's then it it rejected then we have to replace the leftmost b with x uh, after the a's and uh, we return tape head to left and uh, left and date of tape and go to the go to uh, go to the uh, stage 3 like uh, repeat the following until there 
no more Vs left on the left. And uh, if the tape contains any S, then it is rejected, otherwise, it is accepted. Uh, thank you. And uh, Good evening, sir, and everyone over here. I would like to explain in this given equation EQ DFA, where M1, M2, RTFA with LM1 and LM2 is given on this uh, above equation, where uh, now in the process, uh, EQ DFA is a type of Turing decidable language. Now, on the following uh, Turing machine, it decides uh, EQ DFA. Now, on the given input e, AB RDFS, and at the first step, we check uh, AB is a proper encoding of uh, two DFS. Now, on the second step, it constructs DFA like uh, LC equal to LA intersection LB complement, whole union LA complement intersection LB. Now on the third, uh, if C belongs to EDFA, then it accepts or if it not belongs to EDFA, then it is uh, rejected. Thank you, sir. This was from my side. Now I would like to uh, call Monjishta to explain her part. Now I will uh, discuss the next example that we have over here. Here we can see that EDFA is given as a DFA, that A is a DFA and A of A is 5. We have to prove that this DF is decidable by providing an algorithm that decides it and also have to say why the provided algorithm is decidable. So let's move on to the solution and on the first step we have to mark the state, so starting state A and then on step 2 we have to repeat until there are no new stages which are getting marked. On step 3 we have to mark any state that has an incoming transition to it from any marked state. On step 4, if no accept state is marked, we will accept it, otherwise we will reject it. Now this algorithm is decidable since it makes progress at each iteration. Uh, since at least one node will be marked off and there is no possibility of an infinite that Now that was all from my side. Next we have the MCQs and I would request Devina to explain the first one of them. Uh, thank you, Manjushita. So, uh, this is the first MCQ, and we, uh, for this, we have to see which one of the given uh, three statements are true. So, the first one is uh, we know that it is true because we have already discussed that during decidable languages are closed under complementation. The second one is uh, false because the definition of NP class or, uh, states that it can be solved by a non-deterministic Turing machine. So all non-deterministic Turing machine is already decidable. And parallelly we can also say that the third statement is true. So the correct option is num option D, only 1 and 3. That is all for me. The next part will be explained by Anand. Thank you, Devina. So, uh, there are the question, uh, there is a question, uh, which of the following problems are decidable? So, option A, option A is also, option A is uh, undecidable, as a given program over uh, produce the output, is undecidable, uh, because there is no Turing machine to determine whether a given uh, program will produce an output. Also, option 2, if A is a uh, context free language, then L, uh, then complement and uh, complement of in, uh, L also context free. Uh, it is uh, undecidable. Context free languages are not closed under complementation. In in the case of uh, three option three, it, uh, if L is regular language, then uh, complement of A L also regular. Uh, it is decidable because regular language are closed under complement uh, closed under complementation. And uh, option 4, it is also uh, decidable because recursive languages are closed under complementation. So, answer uh, answer is uh, option D, B and 4. And uh, the question uh, will explain, next question will explain by Anishka. As we can see, my question is, which of the following uh, statements
means are false. If, uh, we can see first one is uh, for every non-deterministic uh, Turing machine, there exists an equivalent deterministic uh, Turing machine. And if we go uh, right from the first point to third point, it, uh, we can see that uh, Turing decidable languages are closed under intersection and complementation and uh, to, uh, option for if we see the option for uh, during the rec uh, recognizable languages are also closed under uh, union and intersection so we are left with the if we see the uh, Option number two, uh, during this uh, recognizable languages are closed under union and complementation. So, my uh, question, uh, answer of my question is uh, number C, it means uh, two, uh, uh, C, it means uh, three, uh, during decidable languages are closed under intersection and complementation. So, yeah. Thank you, Anushka. Now, here we have the last MCQ by me. Um, as we can see here in the question, it is given that a media encoding of a Turing machine over the string 0, 1 in and let a equals to m such that m is a Turing machine that accepts a string of let 2, 0, 1. And we have the following options that is option A, recitable and recursively enumerable, option B, undecidable but recursively enumerable, option C, undecidable and not recursively enumerable. And option D, decidable but not recursively enumerable. But the correct answer will be option B, that is undecidable but recursively enumerable, because there are a finite number of strings of length 2014. So a Turing machine will take the input string of length 2014 and test it. If the input string is present in a the language, then Turing machine will halt in the final string. But if the Turing machine is unable to accept the input string, then it will halt in the non final state or go in an infinite loop and never halt. Thus, L is undecidable and recursively anyone. Moving on to the next slide, we will like to conclude here. When we talk about a Turing machine, it should accept the input or reject it or keep computing, which is called a loop. Now, la now a language is recognizable if and only if a Turing machine accepts this tree when the provided input lies in the language. We have detailed more about this in this presentation and with the help of exa demonstrations, examples and examples, concepts became more clear. These are some websites from where we have collected our information which has helped us in creating this presentation. Thank you sir for giving us this wonderful opportunity and everyone here for giving me the attention. Presentation, thank you all.